Can you explain ISO 20022 and its connection to XRP? You want it, you're gonna get it. Okay, so imagine you and your three best friends all have a business and all of your businesses deal directly with each other. The only problem is you are all in different countries and you all speak completely different languages. You can see where this would be very inefficient and clunky. Until one day, one of you decided, let's create our own language and this is what we will use for our business. Once you all learned it and accepted it, it was far superior, far more fast and more efficient. Well, this, my friends, is exactly what the banks have done with ISO 20022. This is their language for the international banking system so that they can communicate with each other very quickly, very inefficiently, efficiently rather. Currently, all of the banks across the world, they all speak different languages, they all have different currencies, and they all have different laws and regulations that they have to adhere to. ISO 20022 is a language that they all can agree upon that is the standard for them all to communicate with fully. So ISO 20022 is international communication via currency at speed and efficiency. XRP's role in this is as follows. XRP was a decentralized cryptocurrency designed to do international transactions at speed and at low cost. So here is an illustration of exactly what XRP does. At this actual speed in real time, it transfers into different currencies using itself as the stable coin. This is what XRP does. On the current system, it takes about five days to do an international transaction and it costs about $30. If you were to use XRP, it would take about three seconds and it would cost 0 0.00001 XRP, which one XRP is 38 cents. XRP was the first ISO 20022 coin that was added to the operation. Ripple is the centralized company that use, utilizes the technology that is XRP. They are not one and the same, which is why this movement is inevitable because the banks are the one that are coordinating it. People will say things like, well, what if the government decides to stop it? As if the government is the one that's in charge. You see, government is like middle management. The banks are the one that are actually in charge. This is how it's been. This is how it will always be. If we were playing chess, people think that the government is the king, but in actuality, the government is the queen. They are owned by the king and the king is in charge. The government makes all the moves, but the king is the one in charge. And the king in this case are the banks and they are the one initiating this movement. So it will happen with or without you. Follow me for more.